In this introduction video, we're gonna be talking about why it's necessary for VFX artists to know how color works at a VFX studio. It might seem that color is kind of straightforward, but it's really quite complicated. So I'm gonna be unpacking the color complexities for you, and we're gonna be talking about what you're gonna learn in this course. When you start talking about color, I know right off you're like, hey, I'm an artist, I've been in school, of course I know how color works. And yes, you are right, but do you really know how color works at a VFX studio? Well, if you're watching this video, you might fall into one of these three categories. The first one is that you might be breaking into VFX very soon, probably working on your demo reel. Well, most likely the color workflow that you used on your demo reel is incompatible with VFX work for a feature film. If you use the same color workflow that you used on your demo reel on a feature film, you would permanently destroy the color of that production. It is a bit hard to believe and kind of shocking that you would spend years going to school, but no one has told you, much less taught you, how color really works in a VFX production. And if you're wondering why universities and online educators don't teach how color works at a VFX studio, then just hold that question in your mind for just a minute because we're gonna be explaining all of that throughout this presentation. If you're not breaking into VFX soon, you may be in the category where you're new to a VFX production. You're super excited, it's your first job, but you didn't realize how much you didn't know about color. You really feel like you've been dumped into the deep end and you're starting to drown just a little bit. When you go online, you try to find answers. The information is so fragmented and no one explains the whole process. And hey, you can try to get some help from the people that you work with, but they're really busy and don't have a lot of time to help you out. I know it can be crazy frustrating to be a new artist in visual effects. Or you might be in the third category where you're currently in VFX, but want to round out your skill set or jump into a different discipline, if that be from roto to comp, texturing to DMP, modeling to environment artists, and you need to know more about color. If you find yourself in any of these categories, this course will provide you with all the color training and tools required for you to succeed in a VFX production environment. You may have heard the common phrase that VFX is all about making pretty pictures. And that is very true, but there's a lot that you have to go through in order to get to those pretty pictures. So think of it like an iceberg. The pretty part is the part that you can see above the water. But in order for those beautiful icebergs to be seen, a massive portion of that iceberg has to be sitting under the water. If the top of the iceberg represents a beautiful image, then in the case of color workflow, the bottom represents all of the color science, the processes, and the standards you have to get through in order to get to those nice images. When you're in school and working on your demo reel, your whole focus is on making pretty pictures. What is typically not taught in school is how you actually arrive at those pretty pictures in the context of a VFX Studios color workflow. Flow. And when you're talking about how much you actually need to know versus what you're taught in school about color, it's probably close to how much of the iceberg you actually see in the water. They say it's around 10% of the iceberg that you see above the water, while 90% lies underneath. So if you're the typical VFX graduate, you'll find yourself in the position where you need to subsidize your own education, and that's what this course is all about. So why is there such a huge disparity between what is taught in school and what you need to know to work at a VFX studio? It really comes down to the demands of the final output. So schools know that the final output for students' education is a demo reel. The final output of a film production is the theatrical distribution. All demo reels will be seen on low quality displays over the internet, while films will be seen on very expensive, high quality theatrical projectors where the range of color and contrast far exceeds what normal displays are capable of. The huge quality differences in display would alone justify the higher standard in color, but that's not the only reason. Every film goes through a post-grading process, so those images have to have a high image integrity, so when those colors get pushed around, it doesn't break the image. Also, other major considerations would be the distribution of the film to other media formats, such as streaming, TV, and Blu-ray, each with their own color standards. And for future-proofing, so the film could be seen on higher quality consumer displays that will be developed in the future. 
When you cut your demo reel, no one else is going to be post-processing those images, and you only have to worry about the distribution on the internet, so the demo reel can get away with a lot lower integrity of the image. At this point, you may be thinking that your purpose in going to school was not just so that you could post things on the internet, but to learn how to actually work in the VFX industry. Well, here I have four additional reasons why schools and online educators are not really equipped to teach a VFX Studio color workflow. Schools do have a limited time to teach, so they often stick to what they see as the most relevant information that you need to know. And they know that you need to get a demo rail out there, so they put all of their focus into that one thing. Well, and the reality is that capturing and producing feature film quality color is extremely expensive and doesn't really pay off for schools because they don't have to adhere to the same standards as film because like we just discussed, their final output is low quality media for the internet. And it's possible that color for film is so far away from what the schools normally do that professors don't actually have the expertise to teach color even if it was offered. And to be fair, schools do often admit that they can't teach you everything and figure that color will be one of those things that you're taught on the job. Whether you agree or disagree with the past schools have taken, it does kind of stink. But that's why this course exists, to fill in the gaps of your education. So now let's spend some time talking about why color workflow is so important to you to know in order to be productive in a VFX pipeline. The work at a VFX studio is massively complex, spanning hundreds and hundreds of people across a dozen different disciplines, each discipline with its own type of complex tasks, and then you have to pass all of that from one end of the studio to the other, which is quite a feat. Now each department deals with color in some way. If there's a systemic color issue where there's a loss in color quality in varying places along the pipeline, it can result in a huge loss of productivity and could ultimately jeopardize the success of the project. This can be the case for several reasons. With such a complex system, it's difficult to track down where the issue occurred and why it happened. It can potentially happen anywhere along the studio's pipeline. You could have someone early in the pipeline inadvertently make a color error and then someone picks up that work to do their own work. You could have good work being done on top of bad work. And if bad color work happens on a regular basis without correcting the issue and that work is shown to the director, then that can really jeopardize the relationship with the client. See, all this loss of productivity costs money. It's the VFX studio's sole function to provide high quality images to their clients, and if they can't do that consistently, they won't be in business for very long. To combat color errors, studios dedicate a lot of time and resources to a studio pipeline. This pipeline automates some tasks with predefined presets in order to minimize errors. In the context of a color workflow, this ensures that what you receive and what you deliver as a VFX artist has the right color. You can think of this as the studio's first defense against color errors. But even well-established pipelines can still have user errors, and therefore studios expect VFX artists to know how color works in order to be an additional line of defense against errors. And what if the studio that you work at doesn't have a well-established pipeline? Well, then that means that you, the artist, is the color workflow for the studio, which can be a little frightening for new artists. It's been my experience that as an MPC Academy trainer that the number one mistake made by new artists has to do with color. And the tough thing is that there's no tolerance at a VFX studio for these kinds of errors. For example, if you were to submit your work with the wrong color space for a review, it's very likely when your work is projected on that screen in the review room, the lead or VFX supervisor won't even look at it. They'll just pass right by your work. And that's because it's a waste of time to even look at work if it's wrong. And now you're stuck. You can't move forward on your work if you don't get feedback. If it's a persistent problem, artists can be written up for submitting their work incorrectly for reviews. So we've talked about why color is not generally taught and why it's really important for every kind of VFX artist to know how color works at a VFX studio. So now let's talk about the topic of why color is so complex. It's because there are several elements to a color workflow that all have to work together, which means an artist needs to understand each of these elements. These elements are bit depth, lookup tables, data encoding, color models, file format, 
and color space. Then you have additional indirectly connected elements that are really important for all VFX artists to know, that of compression, video and codecs, alpha channels and multi-channels, high dynamic range, that of aspect ratio and frame rate. These elements all fit and work together like a puzzle. If one piece in the puzzle changes, it's likely to have a cascade effect throughout them all. Just to give you an idea of the level of complexity, if you just had three variables, you could get six different possibilities. But if you change that from three to six different variables, like we have in the center of our puzzle here, then you get a whopping 720 possible variations. It's true that all things become exponentially complex as you increase the number of variables. So even with our seemingly small 6 to 11 elements that we have here for our color workflow, it can get really complex really fast. And if you're starting to feel the urgency and the weight of needing to master a VFX Studio's color workflow, you can be relieved to know that the Color Workflow for VFX Artists course offered by the VFX Horde has an in-depth training for each of these elements. So that's a lot of concepts to master, but you also need to understand the practical application of these concepts in VFX applications. Each application has their own color workflow inside the program we'll be going over in the course. And then in the course, we're gonna string these applications into one complete workflow. And to top it all off, we're gonna be going over the Academy Encoding System, or ACES Color Workflow, which is the newer VFX standard for color workflows that's been adopted by many studios. And that concludes this presentation. In the next presentation, we're gonna be talking about the training framework for the course that's designed to maximize learning as quickly as possible. If you're on the fence about enrolling in the course, please try out all the free content. You know it's free content because of the light gray unlock icon within the training module. And well, if you've just signed up for the course, congratulations because you've just become a part of the most complete in-depth training on the subject of color workflow for VFX artists. And actually we have a ton to get to, so let's get started.